I will give you a little background about myself. Uh, I come from both specters of this world. My mother was an American who met my father, who's an Arab, Jordanian, in Humble State College University today. My American side, my great-grandfather was mayor of Eureka, California. He was also an excellent friend with Winston Churchill. From my Arab, Arabic side, my grandfather was the chieftain, Mukhtar, and he owned a big portion of the shepherd's fields, you know, where the angel came down and proclaimed the Messiah? That was all owned by grandpa, most of it. And he was also friends with the notorious Hajj Amin al-Husseini, who was the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, the Supreme Muslim Council. And he was seen on the eve of the final solution with Adolf Hitler conspiring to destroy the Jews all throughout the Muslim world. I call him the Haman of the Muslim world. He constructed two divisions out of the eight divisions of the Nazi war machine. Most Americans do not know that two divisions out of the eight divisions of the Nazi war machine were Muslim fundamentalists. Most Americans think that Islamic fundamentalism is something new. It is not. It's very old. Most Americans do not even identify what Islamic fundamentalism is or what is Islam. I'm going to identify Islamic fundamentalism for you. So when you see it happen and you watch the footage on the TV or you listen to stuff on the radio, that everything is going to fit the mold of this definition I'm about to give you. But I want you to memorize it. Here it goes. Islamic fundamentalism is a cult-like process that indoctrinates masses in unison in order to convert them to become seekers of salvation by death in order to establish an Islamic theocracy where Sharia law takes over the entire laws of the society in which Islam and Muslims are dominant and non-Muslims are subservient. This dogma will take the life of the recruiter and the recruitee in every aspect of their life in which they always long to the glory days when Islam was triumphant and when Islam ruled the ancient world. There's simply a needle that's stuck in the past. Islam was wounded by the Christians when the Ottoman Empire was dismantled. And what is being attempted to happen now is that this wound must be healed. It must come back to life and Islam must be revived. This is what you see happening around you. Yet in the West, there is this facade of denial of what is going on. When I first started to read the Bible, I was fascinated with the minor prophets. I began to see very quickly that the good guys that I knew were the good guys were the bad guys in the Bible. And the bad guys in the Bible were my good guys. Something was very fishy. I began to see that my Mahdi was your Antichrist. And your Christ was my Antichrist. In fact, Muhammad said that one of the signs of the times for Muslims is that the false Christ will lead 70,000 Jews and Christians from Jerusalem. Satan even knew that there will be a unity between Christians and Jews in the ends of time. And one of the signs that we know the Mahdi is coming is that the Mahdi will bring a seven-year peace upon the earth. Yet when I read the book of Daniel, I was crushed to find out that, that my Mahdi was your Antichrist. 
something indeed was very fishy. I began to begin to understand that Satan was extremely clever. That if you want to understand prophecy, you must pick on the brains of Satan because he knows it. He knew it all along for thousands of years. So he set up Islamic eschatology to match your eschatology, except he flipped who the good guy is to become the bad guy, the bad guy, the good guy. We have just completed the 2007 International Prophecy Conference with nearly a dozen world-renowned speakers, but you don't have to miss a minute. I've been invited to many prophecy conferences, but this is the first one that I was allowed to talk about prophecy. Could the apparitions that perform numerous signs and wonders that the Catholic Christians revere and worship also be the same things that Muslims will also worship? Our spiritual link is so connected to Israel that whatever God promised Israel as a blessing can come upon us as Gentiles. By 2015, Muslims will make up a majority of the Russian army. Get the entire conference today. All messages on audio tape or CD for only $119 plus $10 shipping. Or on DVD for only $199 plus $10 shipping. When you order all the sessions, we will send you absolutely free the historic convocation where eight speakers were together on one panel for three exciting hours. Call now, toll free, 1-888-463-7639 and have your credit card ready. All my life as a teenager, I grew up in the Middle East. In the Palestinian areas, of course. My desire was to die as a martyr. Because the only way one can assure one's own salvation in Islam is to die as a martyr. Most Muslims will tell you that they reject Christianity because no one can die for somebody else's sin. That the idea of a Messiah dying on the cross to redeem mankind's sin is absolutely rejected in Islam. There is no atonement for sin by anybody in Islam. This is the main focus that Islam came as a religion was to supposedly correct the Jews and the Christians, specifically the Christians, because the Christians believe in the Trinity and they believe God is our Father. They believe God came in the flesh. They believe that Jesus died on the cross. All these things are denied in Islam. Islam came as a religion for one sole purpose and one reason alone. Uh, that is to deny Abba, our Father, to deny the Son, to deny the Holy Spirit being God, to deny the Trinity, and to deny the crucifixion of Jesus. Of course, that should pop up an important verse for you. 1 John 2.22 Who is the liar? He who denies that Jesus is the Christ, that God came in the flesh. He is anti-Christ that denies the Father and the Son. When I read this as a Muslim, something is more fishy. <laughs> something is definitely wrong here. How could it be? that I would accept these very elements that I hated all my life. The Trinity. I began to see.